Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> Let's play um, the song. <laughs> yeah, we got these in right before um, we went live tonight. Yes. It's the Edge Badge. Yes. It plays audio, as yes. you can hear in the background. Uh, do you want to do that again or something? No, or? I, well, I had to turn it on so I could do the yes, no demo. That's why I keep saying yeah. yes. You know what? No, let's uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's uh, okay. t- turn it off and turn it back on. Okay. Because I think it matters. Okay. We have animations. Animations. We have audio. Audio. It's on. Yeah. Okay. And so this... This is the Edge Badge, which is, you might be like, this looks a lot like the Pi Badge. Well, you're right. It's basically a Pi Badge with a microphone on the front. Uh, when we first designed the Pi Badge, we were, people weren't doing machine learning on the Edge uh, with microphones, but uh, now they are. And so we're like, okay, well, let's just update it. It's the same exact back. Um, and we just connected up uh, the microphone to uh, pins five and six. Uh, and so it, it appears here. And uh, we can use this to do voice recognition. So the demo that I have here is our classic uh, yes, no uh, detection. It's not connected to the internet. Not connected internet. to the internet. This is all on the device. But I'm going to okay. try to do a live inference demo. Yeah, it's no, always it's risky. Just, yeah. Yes. Yes. It's always risky. Yes. Okay, I have to be a little farther. No. Secret is you can't be too close. Yeah, you, I think you, v, you lean right? down very close because you have the overhead. Right. But, but that's fine. I'd rather have people see that it's not perfect every time and also that it um, actually does work. I think if someone could help us with that FIR filter, they might be able to prove this. Um, okay, okay, so it can do uh, audio detection. It also has accelerometer. And uh, as you saw from the earlier video, there's gesture detection as well. And uh, we might actually ex- end up extending this badge more and more to add more sensors as there's, you know, as we, we want to see what are people doing with TensorFlow Lite. And then we have some space here. We can just keep adding sensors all around here as necessary. Um, yep. But this is part of our BrainCraft project. Yeah, it can also, it has feather headers so you can add Yes, stuff and you can plug in more stuff. And also has STEMA connectors. That's so right. if you want to add other sensors that aren't even built in, uh, you can just plug and play them and then um, use the Arduino TensorFlow Lite library which uh, we have a slight wrapper that just kind of does all this display stuff for you. Uh, and you can get started real fast. Okay, next up, foam. <laughs> it's foam. It's Eva foam. We have two friends named Eva. Um, yeah. This foam is about two millimeters thick. It's great for crafting and cosplay. Uh, I just saw this pack and I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, I think I like the idea of a pack of EVA foam in a, in a variety of colors. You get, you know, one of each color. And uh, it's only a couple bucks, and um, great if you want to do crafting projects, attach uh, hardware to them, um, cut them, shape them, make robotics. So I think uh, overall, kind of fun stuff, very easy to work with. We should, when I was like, we only had felt, now we yeah. got foam. So instead of cutting up yoga mats, uh, check these out. They're about a, a sheet of paper sized. So not too bad, about eight, eight and a half by 11 inches. And like we said, two millimeters thick, and you get 10 different colors. Okay. For the rest of tonight, it's all STEMAs and new products. All oh, STEMAs. STEMAs, 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 STEMAs. And I just want to point out something. STEM, STEMA brings, brings connectors together. So STEMA, Why? Well, STEMA works with Quick. STEMA it works does. with Grove. STEMA yes. works with Gravity. Yes. STEMA works with all those. Those are all words that people are like, what are those words? So there's multiple yeah. different ways that companies have come up with uh, unique and correct in all their own ways of connecting hardware together. And we didn't want to make something that couldn't work with them. So we don't want to make yet another one. We yeah. want to make something that works with all of it. So we use the same connectors as the SparkFun Quick, which we really like because they're small and they have a really good clicky feel. Um, but the pinout is compatible and the voltages are compatible with Grove. So Grove is a five volt logic uh, setup. Um, and so all of our boards, which we've always kind of done, are always um, level shifted. So work with three volt or five volt. Why? Because even though everything's moving to three volts, all the SAMD and M0 and M4 boards and the Linux boards are all three volts, there's still a lot of people with Arduino Unos and Leonardos and um, Megas. So these old designs, these 8-bit designs that run at five volts. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't have something where there's a risk you could plug it in and, and accidentally break your chip yeah. because they are... They're pretty sensitive. You do have to run them on three volts and use uh, okay. three volt logic. So we have some new stem boards. All right. So kicking off, First yeah, we just up. timing worked out. 
starting with the MPU 6050. So this is a classic old uh, accelerometer gyroscope. Um, people might even be asking, why are you carrying a chip that's like so many years old? A lot of people actually still want this. It's used in a lot of projects. It's, a, it's oldie but goodie. It's solid. It, it, it works pretty well. Uh, it's not the most precise. There's better quality ones. But like I said, it, this is, there's a lot of example code for the MPU 6050. So we put level shifting on it. As you can see, it's got a three-volt regulator, uh, decoupling caps, and uh, the plug-and-play connector. And here is a demo. Um, you can see connected uh, up to a feather with a quick cable um, that goes to uh, headers. And then it's running a little demo. And then what's really neat, what I like about this design that Sparkfront came up with is, of course, you can chain them. So if you want a GPS, you can then have an OLED, you can have another sensor, you can have an RTC, whatever, you can chain them together. Um, but I like having these, these small sensors. And the connectors actually don't even take that much space. We have the four mounting holes, and then the connectors just go on the side. And uh, we even have a little on LED as well. Okay. So, so the MPU 6050, that's first. So it's a six DOF sensor, accelerometer, and gyroscope, often sometimes called an IMU. Um, and uh, we have library code for Arduino and CircuitPython slash Python. Okay. Next up, looking very similar, but not quite the same, is the LSM303 AGR. We've actually carried the LSM303. We've carried a couple different versions of the LSM303. Um, it's a magnetometer accelerometer, sometimes called an e-compass. This is good for when you want to find, uh, you know, magnetic north. And uh, it can do tilt compensated compass activity. Uh, so it's, an, it's a six DOF sensor, but a different kind of six DOF sensor. And uh, like we said, it's uh, magnetic, not gyroscopic. We do have some nine DOF sensors as well and more coming, but uh, this in particular is magnetic. So you see it's, uh, it you know, can sort of tell you which way north is, uh, X and Y is positive. So north is uh, kind of behind me and you can see the values kind of maximize when it's pointing behind me. So there you go, that's where north is. And um, mm -hmm. accelerometer tells you the tilt. And so you use, there's, we have code for calibrating this and then calculating which direction is north, even if it's tilted all the way around in any direction. And that's what your phone uses to uh, calculate which way is uh, north. So right. here you go, plugged in. Try to show and then you lead it in the community is another yes, Shema. Yes, third but not least is a mini GPS GNSS. So this is a, a global positioning satellite sensor. Uh, it is the tiniest one I've ever seen. It's just so adorable. It's only, it's called the PA-1010 because it's 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by about like six millimeters. Uh, so we fit it onto a board about one inch by one inch. Um, and it has the uh, uh, antenna built on top. Now we're indoors, so I couldn't do a demo of it getting GPS data anyways, because it wouldn't work from indoors. You do have to be outdoors. But uh, it works pretty well. Uh, it's got good sensitivity, good tracking. Um, once it's outside and it gets ephemeris data, uh, it knows where you are. Um, and what's nice about this GPS is most GPSs are UART only. Um, and it does have UART connectivity over here. We have the RX and TX and power and ground pins, and they're all level shifted, uh, and that's wonderful. But in addition, it also has I squared C, which is why we're able to chain it along these other I squared C sensors. And uh, we've updated our code for the Arduino and CircuitPython libraries. So what's neat is there's a lot of uh, single board computers that don't have I squared C, or sorry, they don't have UART, but they do have I squared C. Or other chips that, again, usually don't have spare UART or you want to use software serial, and it's kind of messy. It's a lot nicer to use um, I squared C because you don't have as precise timing needs and you can read you know, the data much faster and you can share the bus. So this is on address uh, 10. And then on the back, we have a spot. We give you a, a battery holder. We didn't solder it on because we actually wanted to, people might want to keep this as slim as possible because when you add the coin cell, it does get a little chunkier, but we like a removable coin cell. So you, know, you can always make sure it's fresh and if it gets damaged or runs out, you can always replace it. But a GPS on the back will uh, ensure that even when power is cut, um, it retains that ephemeris data so that you don't have to uh, re-download it. It gives you a, a faster fix um, on a restart. And it has a PPS LED, so pulse per second output. People like that. Uh, it has a sleep mode. So you can put it into sleep mode where it saves the ephemeris data, but it isn't actively receiving because it uses about 20 or 30 milliamps doing that. 
and then you send it a command to wake it up. So it's it's a very nice um, it's a nice capability that isn't on some GPSs. So it's a very cute. It's like the smallest GPS we've seen, and with I squared C capability, um, I'm really liking this little fellow. Yay, GPS! Okay, and with that, it is new products. New, 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 new. All right, new product recap. Okay. New, new, new. We have the Edge Badge. It's just like a Pi Badge, but now has a microphone, which makes it great for speech or gesture, motion or calculation based machine learning. And there's plenty of ports and plugs to add more sensors as people do more TensorFlow Lite projects. Check out our TensorFlow Lite for Microcontroller Guide on how to get started. Uh, there's now an official TensorFlow Lite library from the TensorFlow and Arduino team. Yay, thank you, it's so great. Uh, we will be deprecating our old library and using only the new one. We've got Eva foam, two millimeters thick, about a page size, 10 different colors, great for crafting and robotics and attaching electronics to. Uh, the MP6050 is an oldie but goodie, six DOF accelerometer gyroscope, now available in quick slash QT format for easy plug and play IMUing. We also have the LSM303 AGR, the latest generation of the E compasses. Uh, the LSM303 series, this one is even smaller, and so it fits great on this little STEMI QT board. Again, only one inch by 0.7 inches. I squared C output has Arduino and circuit Python code for it. It's wonderful. And finally, the mini GPS, uh, which has I squared C or UART. Again, we like that I squared C action uh, with an optional battery uh, connector that you can put on the bottom if you want to uh, have a battery backup. Um, it's very small, but has a built-in antenna, so you can get GPS data and stream it over I2C. Again, code for Arduino and Python. All these things. 